Hello everyone. We will be starting to cover the conics topic from this lesson. This conics is one of the uh, big modules of the uh, year 12 mathematics extension 2. There is some prerequisite before you start the topic conics, the parabola and the parametrics. You must be able to handle most of the question of the problem and parametrics question properly then you won't have it you won't be having any problem for this but if you're having a little bit of trouble in understanding the problem and the parametrics i suggest you to go back to those topic and come back whenever you're ready again okay so again uh, there's a, a prerequisite okay so problem and parametrics for this one okay so assuming uh, we we understand you knew those topic already then we're gonna s cover the conics topic on top of the parabola and parametrics. Okay, the conics. Okay, the word conics sounds like it's coming from a word called cone. Okay, have a look at this. One. There's a cone over here. Cone. This is a cone. Let's. We have uh, kind of a very sharp sword like this one. Okay, and then we're gonna have a strong smash to cut this cone in half like this one over here. What do you think about the shape in, in a being made by the slash of the smash of the uh, very sharp sword? You can make certainly a circle. Okay, so you can make a circle from the, from the cone. What else that you can make? So we can make a little angle rather than straight horizontal. Then you can smash that direction, okay? Then you can make something like this sort of shape. What do they call this? A lot of you, you know, may think, oh, it's an oval. Yes, that's not wrong. However, this shape is being called ellipse. Okay, so from today, I suggest you to call it ellipse rather than oval. Okay, so oval is too childish name while the ellipse is so technical, so appropriate for you, okay, appropriate name for you. Okay, what else? We're going to have a str strong, in a, in a kind of cut in half or cut the part in, like a straight horizontal shape, like a side. Then you can make a shape like this. What do they call this? That is called parabola, okay? That's called parabola. Okay, what else? We can have another cone, which is a, a vertically standing to the existing cone. Then we can make a strong slash like this. Then you can make uh, this shape and that shape here. So what do they call this? It is a hyperbola. Okay, it's nice and easy, just hyperbola. Okay, what we did, okay, well let's go back uh, at the beginning, What see what we did here. That we made the shape from the cone, circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola here. Okay, so th those four shapes are coming from cones. Okay, so that's why we call those four shapes is grouped as conics. Okay, that's, that's what we call that conics. Okay, so the topic called conics from this lesson will cover the ellipse and the hyperbola, okay? Because we covered the circles already, we also covered the parabola already, so we're not gonna cover those two, top, uh, those two in a shape from this lesson, okay? So we'll be covering the hyperbola and ellipse, and this lesson will specifically be covering about the ellipse mainly. Okay, you understand that, guys? So that's the basic background of the conics, okay? And we're gonna learn about the ellipse from this one. Okay, we're gonna learn. We're gonna, we're gonna consider about the method in making the ellipse. Okay, so look at this one. As you can see here, we have a strong two spike. Okay, two spike in the, on the board. Okay, on the board made by wood, and then we have a fixed length of a string. Okay, let's say 10 centimeters in length, okay? So it is not elastic. So which means the, the length of the string remains constant across of the whole working over here, okay? Then we have a pencil or a pen. Then we can 
make the string be tightened so that it remains always 10 centimeters rather than 9 or rather than 8. So e here, so that plus that is 10 centimeters all the time. It's a fixed length. And then if you move over here, that plus that is also 10, okay, which is a fixed length. So similarly, if you have uh, this point, so that plus that is always the same. So that is the way how you can make the ellipse. Of course, you can draw underneath. This plus this is also fixed length. Okay? So it doesn't make any difference at all. So that is the way you can produce the ellipse as long as you have the two fixed points. They are called focus. Okay? But we have two focus, so you call foci. Foci is the plural uh, the word of the focus. We're not going to say focuses. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the idea. And then in terms of this one, this is what I just told you. Okay, ellipse is a locus with a focus to the point on the ellipse and the distance for distance from the point of the ellipse to the another focus remains constant all the time. Okay, and then we're gonna look about the eccentricity now. What the eccentricity, say, say for example, this is el ellipse, okay? and this is also ellipse, and this is also ellipse. Okay? There's not a circle, so it's a very fat ellipse. Depending on the ellipse, they are having slight different characteristics per ellipse. So the word eccentricity is, the, is a kind of parameter to recognize which one is which. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to cover eccentricity a little later on, and uh, what the eccentricity is, and how you produce the eccentricity okay, from the formula. So over here, now, in the dotted line from the, from the diagram, that is called directrix or directrix. So directrix. Okay, it's directrix. Have you ever heard about the word called the directrix before, guys? Yes, you should learn about this one. Where, where, where did you hear from that? Okay, where, where did you hear from that? Over here. Say, so please remind about the, the parabola. Okay, so what's the definition of the parabola? That's the focus, that's the directrix. Okay, so then we have a certain point which is the equidistance from the focus to the directories which is a perpendicular distance, they are the same. So that is the definition of the parabola. Okay? We have another one called another one over here. So this is the same. So we, we just have this point, this point, this point, that will make, make a parabola. Okay? So that's where the word directrix is coming from. So we do the same thing. Okay? Say so the distance between S and P divided by P and M, of course this is a perpendicular distance, SP divided by PM remains always the same value, okay, no matter what. So if you have a P over here, that divided by that still remains the same value, okay, so which is the same ratio. And then the other one, SA divided by AN, which is, well in that case that is P, okay, still SP divided by PM over here, or AN, remains the same. So that there's a particular value for this ellipse is called okay called eccentricity. Do you understand that? The so called eccentricity. So that's the same thing. Okay, no matter where where you do, it's always the same. So that's what we call eccentricity. So basically, eccentricity is the the ratio in between SP and PM. Okay, understand that? Now we're gonna learn about the the measurement of the eccentricity. Okay, per each. Uh, the ellipse, okay? So 0 0.9 is the skinny, okay? Skinny ellipse. 0 0.5, it gets a little, little fatter. 0 0.3, fatter again. If it is almost zero, that is a circle, okay? If the eccentric is equal to zero, is a circle, as you can see over here. Now, eccentricity of the ellipse is lying always in between one and zero. So it must be positive, it can't be negative because the ratio of the, of the length is, it can't be negative. And also if it's one, okay, look at here. If the eccentricity is one, 
okay, which is called directrix and the focus. So SP is same as this one. So SP divided by PM is always the same. Therefore, the ratio, b uh, ratio of SP and PM is always the same, which is one because same length. So the eccentricity is one is called parabola. Okay? And then if the eccentricity is greater than one, that is hyperbola. Okay? So we're going to cover this one later on. So we're going to purely work on this and uh, not this one. We're going to purely work on the ellipse. Okay? From this lesson. Now, how we calculate the eccentricity? Okay? There are a few formula. Okay? You may learn, learn about the formula. But what I suggest you to do is I suggest you use, use this formula. Well, if you can remember, there's, there's no reason that I don't want you to use this formula, but this is a little simpler because most of people can remember this formula a little easier than, than this one. How you do? Usually, okay, say x squared divided by a squared plus y squared b squared equals 1. That's what I rewrite again. Eccentricity is 1 minus this divided by that, whatever that is. Okay? Say, for example, x squared divided by 2 plus y squared equals to 1. Okay? Then uh, we write 1 squared, 2 squared, like this one. If you write over here, say, say 10 squared, 5 squared, yes, easy. You can just write the smaller one up there. 5 squared, 10 squared. So easiest way to remember this one, 1 minus smaller one divided by bigger one. That's usually the easiest way, but uh, it, there's, there's no preference, okay? So per person. If, if you prefer this way, please do use that one. If you prefer to use, do you want to use this one, please do use one, okay? Do use this one, so no preference at all. But it's highly depending on your personality or your habit or your, the way that you learn you know, from your own teacher, okay? And then the other one, what you have to think, say so x squared divided by, say for example, say this is 10, this is 5 squared. It is highly possible, still smaller divided by bigger one. No matter where, where, where they are, the eccentricity value still, still be the same. Reason is this one. Okay, so eccentricity for this shape is say, for example, 0 0.8, say eight. Okay, but if you're saying think it exactly the same thing but make it vertical, still the eccentricity is 0 0.8. It doesn't care about that. Okay, no matter what the where the eccentric the ellipses are, eccentricity remains the same as long as the same same shape. Okay, I'm not saying about the size. Okay, but the kind of ratio of a and b, that's always the same. So therefore, we don't care where they are, okay? So one minus smaller divided by the bigger one is usually the easiest way to remember the formula of the eccentricity. Make sense, everyone? Okay, so this case, if a square is bigger than the b square, it's a kind of horizontal shape. If the b square is greater than a square, there will be the vertical shape. That's the only difference, okay? So this is the easiest way that you can remember, okay? But I leave you to make a decision which formula you want to use. It's, it's okay to uh, to memorize those two, but if you think it's too much or if you're not comfortable, please pick one. Okay. We'll do start question one now. Find calculate the eccentricity of this one. Yes, bigger, smaller. So you wanna run. You wanna write. 1 minus smaller divided by the bigger one, like this one, okay? And then calculate this. Make sure the eccentricity is always positive. Remember, eccentricity is, in be is sitting in between 1 and 0. So you may want to say, oh, eccentricity is square root of 5 divided by 3, but it is only positive value. We're gonna, we, are, we are taking only the positive value, okay? Question 2. Well, it doesn't look like that we, we can handle. Yes. Remember the definition of the uh, uh, definition of the uh, the ellipse, equation of the ellipse is like this one. B squared equals to one. So it must be one. Then these are the numbers that we can play with. Okay? So what do you want to do? 
Well, you're going to divide every, every three terms by 144, like this, okay? Then you can see this. Still, I'm not happy about 4, because it must be 1y squared. Say, so cancel, cancel, you'll be able to see this. Yes, then 144 is the value of a squared. 36 is the value for the b squared part, okay? So we are ready to get the eccentricity. The eccentricity is 1 minus smaller divided larger, which is this one. Simplify. Get it, okay? And put them in the square root. That is the eccentricity value for this hyperbola. Does it make sense? Okay, so I'm getting there. We are, we are getting there. That was question two. Question three. Okay, this question three gives us an example where the b square is larger than a square. Doesn't really matter. That is the shape for the vertical ellipse, okay? But eccentricity value remains unchanged. Like this one, no matter what it is. Yes? So due to the fact that a square is less than the b square, so I take the smaller one and take the larger one underneath it. 4 divided by 9, yes? 5, 9, same value. Square root 5 divided by 3. Okay, so we just learn about the basic understanding of the conics, and we just learn about how to make the ellipse, and then and we, we just learn about also the uh, what the eccentricity is from the ellipse. Okay, so that's the basic, very basic understanding of the ellipse. So that's the end of the this particular lesson. We'll c we'll see you at the next lesson in covering a little more than this one. Okay.